Hey everyone, I'm Johnny, and today we're looking at sidearms used by the Allies in World War II. Primarily the British Enfield and Webley revolvers, the Soviet TT-33, and of course the American M1911. Something every cavalry officer could use. Uh. The Allies in World War II used several different sidearms, from customized and personalized showpieces to captured trophies, and of course, Resistance fighters in occupied nations used whatever they could get their hands on, but for this video, we'll just be looking at staple World War II sidearms common in the movies. Now get your old fave patty ass on down the road. To add some context before we highlight our World War II sidearms, I'd like to emphasize that they are definitely used more frequently on film than they were in battle. Good boy. The pulling of a sidearm for intimidation, or as a desperate last measure, makes for a great scene. In reality, most soldiers didn't carry sidearms, and those who did rarely used them. Extra ammo, or even water, was more likely to keep you alive. You guys got any water? No, we ain't got any fucking water. Southern edge of the airfield. Everybody, take another salt pill. In World War II, as opposed to World War I, officers and support troops could carry light rifles like the M1 carbine or submachine guns. In World War II, sidearms were favored for those in non-direct combat as a defensive weapon. They expect Montgomery to do anything about it? You give me that gasoline and I'll gain ground with it. I'll kill Germans too. Sidearms are also favored throughout history for officers whose primary job was to direct fire over personally engage in it. Typically in World War II, most officers, air crew, and soldiers with a special need would be issued a sidearm, though it wasn't uncommon for many soldiers to acquire sidearms by their own means, including purchasing their own or capturing a highly sought after enemy pistol as a souvenir. Those wanting to examine which sidearm was better during World War II should consider that sidearm training made the biggest difference in the effectiveness of these weapons, particularly as sidearm training was very lacking during World War II compared to modern day standards. Just watch this American training video. Remember to take and keep a tight, firm grip on the gun stock. A loose grip will allow the weapon to twist in your hand on recoil. Keep practicing this rigid grip until it's done automatically. Scary from a modern day perspective. You keep your fucking weapon pointed down range or I will shove that fucking piece up your sorry fucking ass. Now look at me, Lieutenant. Gunny's right. But despite the infrequent use of sidearms, there are always individual stories where they were used in desperate situations. A sidearm can be both practical and psychologically reassuring. A sidearm was most effective when used as a tool for policing occupied nations, and for the countless security and police roles needed during a world war. So from a deterrence perspective, or as a symbol of authority, most sidearms are in fact equal. Wait here. Yes, sir. Starting with the United States of America, the most produced and equipped sidearm was the M1911A1, a weapon dating back to the sinking of the Titanic. This is one of the longest serving firearms in history, used in every major American conflict. It's still used by modern forces to date, though more significantly modified, with particular detail to safety in newer versions. Here we go, 1911, 45. Old gun. Served my country well. Long time. During World War II, 1.9 million M1911A1s were purchased from Colt and Remington, amongst many other manufacturers. 
Colt had a good standing with the American military and also sold the M1927 and M1917 revolvers to supplement U.S. inventories. Put a big fat hole in his fucking back. No. Why the hell not? The 1911 was a highly popular firearm in America, even before World War II, and throughout history, it has been one of the most modified and customized pistols ever. In practicality, the firearm was highly effective with good stopping power, using the same .45 ACP round as the Thompson submachine gun. It was also highly tested and proven, and considered one of the most reliable guns of the war, backed up by its service length. The M1911A1 had a 7 round magazine that was easy to change and an effective firing range of 50 meters. It was decently heavy at 2.5 pounds unloaded. The most common Russian sidearm you'll see on film is the TT-33, commonly known as the Tokarev, which was designed to replace the Nagant M1895, and though they would both end up in service together during World War II, the TT-33 is generally more common in cinema. The TT-33 uses the same round found in the standard Soviet submachine gun, the PPSH-41. It has about the same effective firing range as the 1911. The standard box magazine holds 8 rounds. It was just over an inch shorter and half a pound lighter than the 1911. The biggest shortcoming of the TT-33, if we were to compare it to the 1911, would be the lack of safety mechanisms to avoid accidental discharge. I have to report to the boss. Perhaps you'd prefer to avoid the red tape. Neither the TT-33 or the 1911A1 during World War II had a firing pin safety, so either could be discharged if dropped just right. Ideally, both weapons would be carried during World War II without a round chambered. The TT-33 was easy to manufacture, and the Tokarev cartridge was considered one of the best of World War II. Your eyes are bright. My knees are brown, sir. That's nice. I've got brown knees. Uh, you'd like to get away from here. And uh, shouldn't you see some action? Oh. The British used primarily Enfield No. 2 Mark I revolvers. But at the start of World War II, they were playing major catch-up with arms manufacturing and would bring back into service Webley Mark VI, .45 caliber revolvers from World War I, and Webley Mark IVs, which fired the same .38 Smith & Wesson round as the Enfield No. 2. I smell something fishy, and I'm not talking about the contents of Baldrick's Apple Crumble. <laughs> Under Lend-Lease, the British and Commonwealth also got some American Smith & Wesson Victory Model revolvers. But probably the most favourite British revolver of World War II was the hard-hitting Webley .455. The Mark VI weighed 2.4 pounds, heavy but balanced, designed to be rugged, and to take the abuse of trench warfare. It was a very reliable firearm and shows up everywhere in cinema, filling in for many historic revolvers. Ah! All Webley revolvers and the Enfield No. 2 are top brake design, which are faster to load, but can make a less rigid frame overall. Lastly, the British themselves adopted the M1911 used chamber to the .45 self-loading cartridge, and this was used by British airborne units, amongst others, where it was a well-praised pistol. Alright, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this quick brief on some pistols and revolvers used in World War II. As always, if you want to add anything or make any corrections, please do so in the comments section, and we'll see you next time.